So let's continue our discussion on capacitors. In this lecture, we're going to focus primarily on spherical capacitors. So a spherical capacitor essentially consists of two thin concentric shells. Each one of these shells is a conductor, so that means all the charge is stored on the surface of the shells. As shown in the following diagram, we have the inner shell and the outer shell. Now, the inner shell has a radius given by R2 and the outer shell has a radius given by R1. Now, the space between our two shells contains air and this inner region also contains air. Now, these two shells are charged in such a way so that the inner shell contains a positive Q charge while the outer shell contains a negative Q charge. So, the amount of charge charge on each one of these shells is equal but opposite in signs. So we want to answer the following question. What is the equation for capacitance of a spherical capacitor? And to begin, let's discuss the method that we're going to use to answer this question. So in the first step, we essentially want to calculate what the voltage difference is between these two shells. And then we want to use that voltage difference and this equation to calculate and solve for our capacitance. So let's begin by recalling what the electric field is outside a thin concentric shell that is assumed to be a conductor. So in a previous lecture we were able to show using Gauss's law that the electric field outside a thin concentric sphere, a thin concentric shell, is equal to Q divided by 4 pi epsilon naught multiplied by the radius squared. So we're going to use this equation and this result to calculate what the voltage is. Now earlier we were able to show that the voltage is equal to negative of the integral of the dot product of the electric field and the infinitely small distance given by dl between two points, let's call them point 1 and point 2. Now because the electric field in this region is equal to Q divided by 4 pi epsilon naught multiplied by R squared, we replace our electric field with this ratio as shown. Now we replace point 1 with the radius R1 and we replace point 2 with the radius R2. So we essentially begin at this region and we're integrating as we're going along all the way up to the radius of this inner shell. So. We replace 1 with R1, we replace 2 with R2, we replace E with this ratio, and we replace our L with R. So now we're essentially integrating with respect to R and no longer L. So the Q is a constant, 4 pi epsilon naught is also constant. We can take that and bring it outside of our integral as shown in this step. Next, we actually integrate. So when we integrate this, 2 becomes a 1 and we multiply the whole quantity by negative 1. And we get the following result. Negative 1 multiplied by negative Q divided by 4 pi epsilon naught multiplied by 1 divided by R and we're evaluating from R1 to R2. So if we actually evaluate this, this becomes negative and we're left with the following result. Q divided by 4 pi epsilon naught, we multiply that by 1 R2 minus 1 R1. Now, we want to combine this fraction into one fraction, so we need to find the common denominator. We multiply this top by R1, this top by R2, the top becomes R1 minus R2, and our denominator becomes R1 multiplied by R2. And this whole fraction is multiplied by the constant Q divided by 4 pi epsilon naught. So we found what the voltage difference is as a result of these two shells. Now we applied this equation. Q is equal to C multiplied by V. So we solve for our, our capacitance. Our capacitance is equal to Q divided by V where Q is the quantity of charge on either one of these shells. So we choose the inner shell to be positive. 
So Q divided by V is equal to Q divided by this entire fraction. So Q multiplied by R1 minus R2 divided by 4 pi epsilon naught R1, R2. The Q's cancel. This remains on the bottom and this entire fra uh, fraction goes on top. So we have 4 pi epsilon naught R1, R2 divided by R1 minus R2. This is the capacitance for a spherical capacitor in terms of the inner radius R2 and the outer radius R1.